Well, good day. It's good to see you and to be with you. I want to talk to you today about faith. We've talked about grace and we've talked about uh, God's forgiveness and God's mercy. And for a little bit, I want to talk about today about faith. Two blind men came to Jesus. We read about it in Matthew chapter 9. They came to Jesus and they said to him, uh, Thou son of David, have mercy upon us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe you that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And that little phrase just kind of caught my attention. According to your faith. And so I, I looked for an amplified version, and, and it reads something like this. According to your faith and trust, and reliance on the power invested in me, be it done unto you. Wow. You know, it's depending upon our faith. Again and again we read, especially in the New Testament, as Jesus is speaking to people that he delivers and heals. He, he said to them, you know, uh, to one woman that he, he healed, thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Well, we know. What it means is that Christ made her whole. It was Christ that did that. But if she hadn't had faith to believe, it wouldn't have happened. So faith is such a vital and important thing. And I honestly believe this, that we pray uh, a lot of the time without really having faith, without believing. It's it's a hope. It's... it's uh, you know, something that we, we hope that is going to happen and, and we'd like to see happen, but there's a big difference in feeling like that and having that faith to believe that God is going to do this. And I believe with all my heart that we need to approach God. This is what we do every, every Tuesday is, you know, we, we, we're talking about prayer most of the time. And uh, this is where, where prayer, uh, you know, comes into action and really will make the difference. What? When it's a prayer of faith. When we believe that God is able to do exceeding abundantly more than we can even ask or think. You know, I have got a pretty vivid imagination. Believe me, I really have. And I can imagine all kinds of things. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I was always dreaming in school. I was, there was a huge map on the wall of, the, the, of my homeroom. And uh, it filled the whole wall. And it was a map of the world. And in those days, you know, all the countries were colored in different colors. And uh, the, the United Kingdom, the British Empire was always in this shade of pink. And you could look at the map and you could see islands and continents and, and Africa and Australia and New Zealand and Canada. And you could see those huge areas covered in pink. And it has been said, and it was said in those days, that the sun never set on the British Empire. You could look anywhere in the world and find a representation of, of the British Isles someplace in, in the world. And so I love to look at the map and I would dream. I would be far off, you know, in darkest Africa, or I'd be trekking through a desert someplace and everything else, when really my mind should have been listening to what was being taught. And oftentimes the, the cry came out from the front, Evans, pay attention, stop dreaming. You'll never make it. And uh, you know, I thank God that I did make it to some of those places on the map and, uh, and uh, enjoy those things. But I was always dreaming. And you, but you, you got to have that concentration of faith whereby you believe. And so, you know, it was Jesus' job to bring me back to that place 
where I wasn't just kind of imagining these things, but I was facing reality. This was the lesson for today. It was math, it was history, it was something else. And I had to listen in on what they were, what they were talking uh, about so that I, I would learn these things. But, you know, like I said, I was a dreamer. I was always dreaming something about it. Like, and that really gets you nowhere. What we're looking for today are people that will understand that when you come to God and you talk to God and you request God for something, that you do it in reality with faith in your heart, believing that God is able to do this. There's nothing impossible with God. And therefore, I dare to believe, I dare to believe that God can do this. These two men were blind and uh, the Word of God says they, you know, they had determination and tenacity because they followed Jesus into the house. It says when he had come to the house, they came to him. So, uh, you know, they had seen Jesus outside someplace with the rest of the crowd and they would, you know, and they, they called out unto him. They said, Son of David, have mercy upon us, you know, and I don't know whether Jesus didn't take any notice of them at the time or whatever, but the Word of God says that he came and he went into this house. and. They came into the house after him, and, and Jesus then turned to them, and he questioned them. He said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said, yes, Lord. So their, their faith was challenged, their faith was questioned. And I believe it's all right for the Holy Spirit to question our faith. Do we really believe this? Do we believe that God can answer this prayer? Do I believe that God can really deliver that person? Yes, I believe that he can. Excuse the call. I have no idea who's calling me right now, but whoever they are, obviously, I'm not <laughs> doing taping. Sorry about that. Anyway, what can I tell you? God wants us to understand that we need faith when we come. This is why Jesus said, do you believe? Do you really believe that I can do this? And so he was questioning their faith. And God questions our faith today. He asks us as we come to him, do you really believe this? Or are you just asking just for the sake of asking? And you know, it's the right thing to do. And so we'll just request God to do this. But do I really believe it in my heart? The word of God says this, that. They came and they, they, they were questioned of the Lord and they, they were determined. I, I, I believe they were determined to get an answer on this question about their blindness as to whether the Lord would heal them because they followed him. They came into the house after him. And we need sometimes to recognize that we need to press through. You know, don't give up. There's an old song we used to sing years ago. Margie Keller, no, she's from Maine. She's a great piano player, a great singer, gospel singer. And she used to sing this song called, Don't Give Up in the Face of a Miracle. And I loved it because I really believe that it's true that sometimes we're, we're just about to see the miracle take place and all of a sudden we walk away from it and we, we doubt, oh, well, you know, God's not gonna see us through this. And, and we give up. But the song says, don't give up in the face of a miracle. It's just about to take place. Pray a little longer, stay a little longer, persevere a little longer, and God will honor you and God will bless you. These two came in after Jesus and were, were determined to get their healing. The word of God says, you know, when they answered, yes, we do believe that, he touched their eyes and they saw immediately. We need to come into God's presence as Mark 11, 24 tells us. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Wow, you've got to come believing that God is going to answer this prayer. God is going to deliver. God is going to save. God is going to heal. Whatever it is that you're praying for, 
You've got to come with that kind of determination. The Word of God instructs us. Therefore, I say unto you that whatsoever you desire, what it, the desires of your heart, what is it that you're, you're asking God for? When you pray, believe that you receive them. Believe that they're on their way, as it were. The package has already been sent and, and you are ready to receive it. And when you do that, God is going to answer your prayers. You see, it's what? It's depending on your faith. The Word of God says, according to your faith. It depends upon your faith, as I've read to you from the Amplified. According to your faith and trust and reliance on the power invested in me, Christ is saying. You invest power in God. You invest power in Christ and in the Holy Spirit. You believe. And so you invest your faith in this way. And so I would encourage you today that when you pray, don't just pray out of habit. Don't pray out of, out of just the fact that you feel, you know, you must do it. You're supposed to do it. And, and, and you just go through, as it were, uh, you know, the motions uh, of talking to God. When you come, when you pray, believe that God is going to answer these prayers. Believe that God is going to... I talked the day before yesterday to a, uh, a great friend of mine, closest, one of the closest friends I have in ministry today. And uh, he's older than I am. He's 92 years of age. His name is Don Brankel. He was an evangelist. For, and he is an evangelist for you. He's 92 years of age and he's in, in an assisted living uh, facility in Arkansas and uh, he gets to preach to the residents there every Sunday and uh, he was telling me that last Sunday three of them got saved and then on Tuesday morning two of them passed into eternity and he said I got them just in time I got them just in time just before they they left this world he said they accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior so the old guy has still got it and he's still preaching and he we were talking about this thing. We were talking about this subject, about having faith and believing. He talked about a time when he was in a place preaching and a little boy got run over outside the church where he was preaching and there was a terrific sound and, and the people stopped the service and people went out and this little boy had been run over by a vehicle and it had clean gone over him and they picked him up and they, they, they took him uh, into the back of the church and uh, they had him laid out there and, uh, you know, he wasn't breathing. And, and Don, Don Brankel, felt the urgency of the Holy Spirit to pray for him. And uh, uh, the, the man that was there, uh, as it were, looking after this, this little dead boy uh, said, you know, he's dead, he's not breathing, look, he's, you know, it's a waste of time, you know. And Don Brankel said, I believe God can do anything, and I feel I need to pray right now. Will you let me come there and pray? And the man said, okay. And so the crowd stood aside, and Brankel went over, and he laid his hand on this seemingly corpse of a boy. And as he prayed for him, suddenly he began to start breathing, and uh, God healed him. And the little boy grew up and became a preacher of the gospel. And Don was sharing this story with me. And I said, oh, that's the kind of prayer that we're looking for today. Looking for people to pray a, a faith prayer, a faith prayer that believes that God is able to do even that which seems impossible. And restoring those that are, are lost and undone and without hope. I believe with all my heart, God says, it's according to your faith, be it unto you. And that's what he said to these blind men. Jesus said, it's according to your faith. And so, what is your faith like today, friend? Do you believe God? Faith is like a muscle. The only way that it will grow is exercise. Fat does not expand by exercise. All you have to do is sit around and eat and you grow fat. But for muscle to de develop, you have to exercise. And for faith to develop, you have to exercise it. Maybe in the small things, the little things at first, but you, 
You increase the weights as you go along and you get to a place in the end where you say, I know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly more than I can even ask or think of. God is able. And so God says to you, according to your faith, be it unto you. Father, I pray in Jesus' precious name today that you'll give us that kind of faith. Help us to develop faith, the Lord, of such depth and dimension and quality that you, Lord, take note. The, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. You've said so in your word. The kind of faith that moves your hand, God, that causes you to do that which seems impossible in the natural. God, I pray in Jesus' name that once again, Lord, we will hear prayers of this quality and this caliber being prayed and we see the results of what God is able to do. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. God bless you. I'll see you next week.